Namaste. Good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for having us, Liz. It's great that you're here. It's great that you're meditating. Because when you meditate, you not only give the best possible gift you can to your brain and to your body, but you also give a gift to the world. You make the world a better place. So even the environment flourishes around meditators. Go to an ashram and take a look at the gardens. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Or come to our house. <laughs> <laughs> Today's meditation subject is peace. Something we all want, something we all seek. And something that's pretty elusive, like happiness, to most of us, in terms of its lasting nature. Unfortunately, we live in challenging, heartbreaking times, and peace seems even more elusive these days. And that makes us feel less hope that we can have an effect, a positive effect in the world. And life, we know, is uncertain and stressful, and that challenges our inner peace, because nothing outside of us is stable or permanent. It's always in the state of flux. Life is a river, not a pond. It flows. So in the rhythm of life, when we look around in these modern times, we see suffering all around us these days. And we all want to soothe that. We all want to have peace in our minds, peace in our hearts, and peace in our world. But the sages of yoga have been telling us for almost 7,000 years that peace, lasting peace, will never come from our leaders. It's not a top down kind of thing. Peace is an inside job. You see, we've all been tricked, and we all fell for the trick. We were born with our sense organs that seek happiness, fulfillment, attachment, and peace outside of us. Our senses draw us outside, but the outside things are all changing. They're all impermanent. So if we seek peace inside, we can find lasting peace and lasting happiness. The path to peace is through the mind and the heart. The current state of the world with all of its uh, chaos and trauma and war can be understood as a great opportunity for us to manifest peace in our lives and to radiate it from ourselves out to other beings. So the great thing is there are things that we can do. We're not at all helpless. Did you know that meditation can have an effect on war? I'm going to quote from an article called Meditating for World Peace, the Scientific View. An experiment was done in the early 1980s at the height of the Lebanon War. A thousand meditators gathered in Jerusalem and focused on world peace while they meditated. And during the times that that group of people gathered and meditated, deaths in the war zone went down by 75%. And not only did war deaths go down, crime, traffic, collisions, fires, and other destructive events also went down on the days that the group meditated. So from this and similar studies, scientists reluctantly concluded that group meditation seems to prevent war. In reporting these unexpected findings, the world-renowned quantum physicist John Hagelin commented, there is far more evidence that group meditation can turn off war like a switch than there is evidence that aspirin 
relieves headaches. So there is a lot we can do individually, in small groups, and in large groups. When you meditate, you help yourself and you help all beings in the environment. So together, let's take this hour and walk the path of peace. Peace in our minds, peace in our hearts, and peace in our world. When we are at peace, we're happy. When we are at peace, our loved ones are happy. When we are at peace, everyone around us is happy. The whole world benefits from our peacefulness. To reach the wellspring of peace that exists within us, we bring our body, mind, and spirit together. We unite the outer and inner worlds using the breath as the bridge. The breath is the bridge to peace within. When we're fully present in a state of non-judgmental compassion, we are peace. When we become peace, we influence all beings around us in a positive way then even as chaos may swirl around us, we can remain open-hearted and fully present to the people and situations around us that require our care, our love, and our effort. And that is how we can transform anger into calm, peace, and compassion. That is how we can transform suffering into joy. That is being peace. Achieving a calm and peaceful state is the first step to lasting happiness. So today we'll focus on you and me. We'll use mindfulness and meditation to reveal that peace is your true nature. And now Noni will lead us in a dharana or guided meditation. Thank you. Before we start, because this is a HIPAA restricted environment, I'm going to ask, and we're not going to pan views of anyone, just Tess and I are in the recording, but I'll ask you to say your first name. This will help us when we see you again to remember who you are <laughs> if we meet you somewhere not here. So I am Tess. This is You're not Tess. Um, no, this is Tess. Tess. I am Noni. <laughs> don't, don't listen. I could confuse everybody. I am Noni. This is Tess. Kim. Emily. Christy. Liz. Mary Ann. Lisa. Mary Karen. Thank you all for coming. Um, it's on Liz's recording device so that those who could not join us will be able to access it via um, Zoom. And our, YouTube. YouTube. And our plan is to uh, record some of the ones that we've missed, and then they also will be available on YouTube. So. Now you can stretch your arms, your legs, shake them out, because you'll be sitting a little while and you want to be comfortable. These chairs are much more comfortable than last times. <laughs> Take a nice, comfortable sitting posture. And as a reminder for meditating at home, it's best at home to find one chair or one corner or one room where you're going to meditate and keep that as the place that you'll always sit to meditate. This way the energy builds up in the place that you meditate. And that will serve you by supporting you the next time you sit, it will be peaceful and waiting for you. When we sit for meditation, we try to keep our spines as straight as possible without forcing anything. 
This allows the energy that's generated during meditation to rise from the base of your spine to the top of your head. It purifies all the chakras in your subtle body. Allow the back of your neck to elongate very slightly as if you're doing a little nod to somebody that you meet on the street. You know, one of these, you kind of lock eyes with somebody you know and you kind of nod and you keep going. So not a, not a oh, bend down, but a little bend. And then relax your jaw, relax your facial muscles, and feel the grounding of the support of the chair and the floor beneath you. Place your feet hip width apart, flat on the floor. And anyone who wishes to try it at home, use a cushion so that your sitting bones are higher than your knees. Now you can please close your eyes and take in a nice deep breath and let it out slowly. Another deep breath in and breathe out long. And a third deep breath in and release it fully. And then you can return to your normal rate of breathing. <clears throat> Scan your body for any signs of discomfort or stress. And if you find any, send love and warmth to those areas. You can place your hands either palms up or palms down, resting gently on your thighs. Let your whole body relax. Allow any stress that you have to melt away and become fully present right now in this very moment. We have spoken before of developing mind habits. Today, we'll develop a mind habit to ground and center us in calmness and in peace. We especially want our minds to know what to do when something does not go the way we want it to or when chaos occurs. So, if we develop a solid mind habit of calm and peace, then when things don't go our way, our mind will automatically go to that reservoir of calm and peace that exists within us. Today, and for the coming weeks and months, we can each choose to anchor our minds and hearts in the state of calm and peace. Tess and I have found that it is possible to be calm and peaceful no matter what. You too can choose to be calm and peaceful no matter what. And of course your mind goes, how do I achieve this? <laughs> how do I achieve this state of calm and peace? Practice. We have to practice because it isn't automatic. It's a state that has to be cultivated. In the beginning, what we suggest today may seem simplistic. However, we can assure you that these simple steps are quite profound and you may find yourself using them again and again. We'll begin by affirming, I am that essence which is calm. I am that essence, which is peace. So if you would please repeat it in your mind silently, I'll say that again. I am that essence, which is calm. I am that essence, which is peace. Begin by breathing in and silently repeating to yourself, I am calm. 
and as you breathe out fully, silently repeat to yourself, I am calm. Now, breathe in, my mind and my heart are calm. Breathe out, my mind and my heart are calm. You can say this after me in your mind silently. Please breathe in, my mind and my heart are calm. My mind and my heart are filled with peace. Breathe out, my mind and my heart are filled with peace. Breathe in, I am peace. Breathe out, I am peace. Once we've cultivated a state of calm and peacefulness, we can share what we have attained. So together we'll breathe in, my mind and my heart are calm. Breathe out, I am filling this room with the calmness of my mind and heart. Breathe in, my mind and my heart are filled with peace. Breathe out, I am filling this room with the peace that is in my mind and heart. For me, the next step is particularly love-filled and joy-filled. You can listen as I demonstrate, and then we'll do it together. As I breathe in, I silently say to myself, I'm breathing in calm and peace for myself. And as I breathe out, I say silently to myself, I'm sending calm and peace to my loved one, Judy. So you can select a loved one that you would like to send that blessing to now. Take a few minutes and pick your loved one. And then we'll do this together. As you breathe in, silently say to yourself, I am breathing in calm and peace for myself. As you breathe out, silently say to yourself, I am sending calm and peace to my loved one and silently say your loved one's name. Envision for a moment the person you chose receiving your gift of calm and peace and smiling warmly. At home, you can do this practice for as many people as you wish. But we suggest for each meditation session of, say, 20 minutes, it's best to focus on just one person. And then the next time you come back to meditating and doing this practice, pick a different person or the same one. So now we're going to meditate in the soft, nurturing, calm, and peace which is your own true nature. If thoughts come up, you can let them go and return to the breath mantra that you've been using. Hamsa, H-A-M-S-A, -S Hamsa. Silently repeat to yourself, hum, on the in-breath. Sa, on the out-breath. I am that essence which is calm. I am that essence which is peace. We'll do it again. Hum on the in-breath. Sa on the out-breath. I am that essence which is calm. I am that essence 
which is peace. Hum on the inbreath. Sa on the outbreath. I am calm. I am peace. Hum on the inbreath. Sa on the outbreath. Hum on the inbreath. Sa on the outbreath. Continue in this way and meditate.
When you're ready, you can gradually bring your attention back to the room and slowly open your eyes. Stretch out your arms and especially your legs because when you meditate at home, we don't want you falling. We certainly don't want you falling here. Does anyone have any questions? Don't be shy. Does anybody have any comments or experience when they were meditating? That's the most peaceful I've been in a long time. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> we're, we, have, um, we have copies of what I've done today so that you can take it home and you can read it into your phone and have your phone read it back to you. Or you can uh, read it to yourself and then put it down and meditate. Liz, someone asked if there were handouts from the last session. And if so, could they come up mm -hmm. afterwards and pick them up? Yes, yeah, okay. I think the extra handouts. Yeah. Good, thank you. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you. When you say hamsa, you're affirming, I am that essence. I am that which is. And then an attribute which is a virtue. Calmness, peace, love, and we'll add a different one as we go along. So by the time we're all done, you'll be saints. <laughs> um, the thing is, in order to have this work for you, you have to repeat it. So you have to make a choice to set aside the time and actually do the practicing, and then that will become your nature. Now, if you're anything like I am, the minute I make a, a promise to myself, I am going to be so calm and peaceful today, and then all hell breaks loose. And, uh, and, and I have to bring myself back and remember, um, on your breath, sound your breath, and then whatever attribute I'm working on that month or day, I say that. And then if I mess up, the first person that I apologize to is my own heart. Because my heart is the thing that's leading me to want to change, to be something bigger or better beyond what my little self says. Your big self, capital S, is like the witness to your mind, the witness to what happens within you. It's the observer. For some people, it's God. For some people, it's a greater being, a higher being. So the first one I apologize to is myself. If I forget and I'm not peaceful and I become grumpy, you know, um, or heaven forbid, I shouldn't become grumpy. I promise myself I'm not. So I apologize to my heart. And I do the practice of the hum sa. On the in breath, hum sa, on the out breath. And then I repeat, I am that essence which is calm. I am that essence which is peace. And after I sit with that for a minute, or five minutes, then whoever I may have offended, I can go to them and say, I'm sorry. I realize I did something that I promised myself and you I was never going to do again. And look, I did it. <laughs> Please forgive me. And then I, then I can go on. But I do it with kindness for myself first, because we don't want you beating up on yourself for having not been able to attain this state. Have you been here? 
Pretty hard for being cute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, next time we will do the piece. But next, this time it was peace in our own beings, our minds, and our hearts. Next time is peace in our world. In our world. And we're going to be bringing the ancient peace invocations from around the world, from different cultures, different languages, and it's put to music. And we're not going to tell you what it is because we don't want you to go looking it up ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> We want the effect to be here. But we think you're going to like it. Yes. yes. And so, for those of like you who are watching this on the YouTube channel, we invite you to come because in a group Next setting, time. it becomes much more powerful and yeah. your meditation is helped by the other people who breathe their peace and calmness into the space. Okay. Is there anybody else who would like to say anything? I just want to say thank you. This oh. was a real delight and a highlight of the month. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Now let's stay. <laughs> we'll see you next month. Thank you all for being here. Yeah.